Okay, question 59 to 62, SB3 hybridized carbon. Okay, so attached, it's tetrahedral stereo center with four different groups. Notice it says four different groups attached. It doesn't say four different atoms. That's where many, uh, some students get confused. Um, when you're looking for a stereogenic center or a stereo center or a chiral carbon, you're looking for a carbon that is bonded to four different um, uh, substituents. So it's four different substituents. Um, so it doesn't have to be four different atoms. These atoms can be the same, but when you keep going and you keep going and you compare, th that will be different at some point. And uh, number of stereo centers is 2 to the n. Okay, so cholesterol has the uh, following structure. How many stereo centers does cholesterol have? Okay, well, I have a little cholesterol. Here it is. Okay, I thought, no, it's not in my uh, coronary arteries. At least I hope not yet. Anyway, so uh, here's cholesterol. And um, so during the exam, when you, when you see a molecule like this and you have to determine whether or not uh, it is each carbon is bonded to four different substituents, the uh, first thing you're going to do, basically, you're going to ignore anywhere where there are three hydrogens, anywhere there are two hydrogens, because that's where carbon is bonded to the same thing um, three times or two times. It's the same thing. So you just ignore that right away. All the CH3s and uh, the CH2s. But the CH2s are also in here because every time in this geometric figure, uh, you know, you see two bonds, it means that there's two hydrogens. And plus, Acer was nice enough to draw those two hydrogens for you. They won't always do it, but they did. So um, you, you, basically you ignore all these spots here um, that, that are spots that have uh, two hydrogens. So all these ones are going to be ignored. They will not be assessed. To, to know whether or not they are chiral or they have um, four, four different substituents. The other thing you ignore is uh, carbon that has double bonds. Anywhere there's a carbon with a double bond, um, then it's bonded twice to the same thing. So uh, you, need to, um, you need to ignore all of those. So that means you just have these, uh, these last ones uh, that you need to assess. Um, so it's, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Here's one that needs to be assessed. I'm just going to use a different uh, <clears throat> marker for this. This one needs to be assessed. So, and the way that you um, assess this carbon here is you say, <clears throat> well, first of all, this carbon is uh, bonded to a hydrogen. So I'm going to remind myself of that by putting the hydrogen there. It's because I know that it, because it's bonded four different substituents and plus on your exam paper you will have that hydrogen there already so nice so this carbon is bonded to an OH group it's also bonded to a hydrogen here and watch this the question is is this group here the same as this group here now notice there's a double bond down here so is this group going on top here with all these single bonds the same as this group down here? They're clearly different. They're clearly different. So right here, we have our first chiral carbon bonded to four different substituents. Then over here, we have, this, we have to assess this carbon. We notice it's bonded to one thing up here, CH3. It's bonded to something down here with a double bond. That's different. It's bonded to something over here. But look. It's also bonded to all these things going up here. That's clearly different to, to what's going on down there. So this is uh, chiral carbon as well. We come up here, same thing. Bonded up here to something that looks different from this going down here with this all weird stuff. And then, then as, as you have this single bond area and then that's gonna be different from uh, the hydrogen which is also bonded here. So, so we've got another chiral carbon. Then over here, uh, we have a hydrogen, which we don't see. Then we have uh, this stuff here. And then that stuff, which also is connected to all that stuff. And then we have this stuff with a double bond down here still. Oh, that's chiral. And then here, uh, we have a hydrogen that's bonded. We have the stuff up here. We have stuff there, stuff there. It's all different. And then we go up here to this carbon. 
Some students get confused at this carbon. But look, this is different here. There's a CH3 above. This is different from this. You know, this is this one. If you go up here, you can even go up here. Uh, and that's clearly different from going down here and then going up there. So it, it, it is different. It's, um, and then over here, you have uh, um, this up here. You have this going down this way, going down this way. And there's a hydrogen there as well. So that's going to be chiral. And then uh, finally, we have this one. It's got a hydrogen. It's got CH3 over there. It's got that over there. It's got this stuff all down here. So then uh, this one is going to be chiral. And then this one, some people think it's chiral. Of course it's not because this is CH3, CH3. So there's two of the same things bonded to it. So that's not chiral. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And, um, and then we look at the answers and it has uh, more than seven. So on the exam, of course, you're not going to explain it to somebody. You're just going to think it. So you're, you'll just knock out all the, all the ones with three, two hydrogens, double bonds, and then you, you, you assess the molecules. Question 60. Okay, so we're again looking for uh, chiral carbons uh, with uh, four different bonds. And then you, you see the first one, which is, it's an amino acid. Why is it an amino acid? Because it has an amino group and a carboxylic acid group. And so, um, and it has a hydrogen bonded to it. It has a CH3. It has the uh, carboxylic acid group. And uh, then it has the NH2. So this central carbon has four different groups attached. This carbon is bonded twice to oxygen because we know what this means. We know COOH is this. And so look how many oxygens it's bonded to. It's clearly not bonded to four different atoms. Um, so uh, it's only this one that's chiral, um, this carbon right here. And then in the second uh, compound, uh, you can see that there's a carbon, um, there's a COOH, there's a hydrogen attached to this carbon. There's an amino group, which is NH2. And uh, then there's a carbon with two methyl groups there and uh, um, sulfhydryl group SH. So this carbon is clearly a chiral. It's bonded to one thing here, another thing there, another thing there, and then uh, something completely different over here. So that's uh, clearly... Um, uh, chiral. This one is not chiral because it's bonded to methyl group twice. So uh, that's not chiral. And then in an attempt to trick you, um, you know, a Acer put a, uh, a molecule here, uh, the last one, which is uh, the benzene ring. Okay, they put it a circle inside, but you can also draw the benzene ring um, like, uh, like I just did with um, as if it has uh, double bonds inside, it's uh, perfectly reasonable to draw it that way, even though we know it's, a, it's a, actually in a resonance structure. So here, they draw your attention to the uh, clearly um, chiral carbon over here uh, with these four different substituents attached. Uh, so this one's clearly chiral, and they're hoping that you uh, get lost into this ring, <laughs> which of course you will not do in the real exam, because every time you see a benzene ring, you will immediately know that every single carbon is a chiral, meaning not chiral, because every single carbon is bonded, is acts as though it is bonded twice to another carbon. And because of that, it means that it can never be bonded to four different substituents because it's double bonded to uh, carbons. So never consider, even consider, that uh, a carbon in a uh, benzene ring uh, can be chiral. So all three molecules have one stereo center each, and we move on um, to some uh, more fun with, um, with the, the same uh, unit, which is, so they show some dibromal compounds, and then they ask, of the compounds, 2,3-dibromobutane. So I draw it. 1, 2, 3, 4 is but, 4 carbons. Ane, it's a saturated hydrocarbon. And it's 2,3-dibromo. Uh, so at the second carbon, there's a bromine. And at the uh, third carbon, uh, there, there's a bromine. So 2,3-dibromobutane. So, and uh, we're going to compare that with 2,3-dibromopentane. So one, two, three, four, five. Pent is five, like the Pentagon is five. And uh, two, 
3 uh, dibromo, 2 3 dibromo pentane. Okay, very good. So, of the compounds, which one has a meso form? So, they, they, they give you some information about how you can rotate and blah blah blah. But meso, meso means uh, mirror of symmetry, mirror of symmetry. So, what you're really looking for is uh, to draw a line within the molecule and see if you can fold the molecule onto itself. If you can find that mirror of symmetry within the molecule, then um, as long as there are chiral carbons, then uh, this molecule is a meso compound. So if I draw a line down the middle here and I fold this molecule onto itself, indeed uh, I see that there's a plane of symmetry for this molecule. But for this molecule, if I were to draw a line between the bromines, if I fold this molecule onto itself, this extra carbon gets in the way. And so they will not be mirror of symmetry of each other. So th this one has a mirror of symmetry, which means that it, it is meso. This one has no mirror of symmetry. It is not meso. And uh, because it's not meso, but, it, but there are chiral carbons here, because if you look at these uh, carbons, for example, this carbon is chiral because it's bonded to one thing, second thing, this thing, and this thing, carbon, chiral carbon. And in fact, um, you can see that these carbons are chiral. So these are chiral carbons, they're called stereocenters, but this one is a chiral carbon, it means that this has non-superimposable mirror images of itself, enantiomers, optical isomers and this one does not because it has an internal plane of symmetry and therefore it's a meso compound. Question 62. For a molecule to have a meso form it must have a carbon chain that has uh, the question an odd number of carbons in the chain, even number, a plane of symmetry perpendicular to the chain, bingo. A plane of symmetry that is perpendicular to the chain. Here's the chain, here's the plane of symmetry. And uh, so that works. So 62, uh, the answer is C. Um, and uh, if you're doing your review uh, using the Gold Standard Book, you can go to section org 1.4 to review resonance structures and uh, org uh, 2.1 to 2.3 to review stereochemistry, uh, including meso compounds.